thank you so much for um, having us over. Somebody at the beginning of the year told me, be charitable with your money, not your time. So thank you for spending that time with us. Uh, I hope we are not standing between you and Lucky Ali. Uh, a couple of things I wanted to uh, talk to you about. One, of course, I'll try and uh, bring in uh, all of you at any point in time, just so that we get your inputs and suggestions and questions, so that and we make it interactive because it's the, it's the last one. And second, I'm going old school. I saw all the uh, moderators with uh, iPads and all of that. I'm going old school with uh, almost not legible handwriting. So, um, and, and, and before I start the session, uh, I have a coffee with Karan hangover. So I'm going to try and do a quick rapid fire um, with a few questions, just to get to know them a little better. I have too many things on my hand, so excuse me for that. So Ruchira, you first. We'll make it exciting, people. Is there a, is there a hamper at the end of it? Uh, good question. Uh, maybe coffee with me. Uh. Yeah, so both of you, whoever wins gets coffee with me, but all of us can go. I'm actually stumped with the first question. Good one. Okay, so Ruchira, first you. So what are you also known as? Actually, everybody calls me Ruchira and friends call me Ruch. So colleagues, team members, by so, name. So hey, Ruch. Uh, your alternate profession? Wildlife photography. Wildlife photography? Yes. So the one new word added to your dictionary in the last, say, couple of years? Uh, never normal. Never normal? Yes. I've always Post heard COVID, new, yes. I've always never heard normal. new normal. You never normal. Never now. normal? Okay. Yes, we are in that phase. Okay. A habit that you're proud of? Nothing goes uh, unnoticed, nothing goes unanswered, nothing goes, uh, uh, yeah. So every, you're, you're every present phone. in the moment, basically. Uh, yes, yeah, yes, okay. absolutely. Uh, one tech in HR you're betting on? Hyper-personalization. Okay. And hyper-personalization of benefits. Okay. And uh, if you're an app, which one would you be and why? Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, Canva. Canva because um, it really lets you create your own collage. So, so it's, I'm, it's I'm really sorry, space. but I don't know what Canva is. Okay. I I'll, I'll, will share coffee okay. with me. And Canva education. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Uh, Brijesh, now you, quickly. Yep. Uh, what are you also known as? Uh, most of my friends and colleagues call me Bridge. Bridge. Okay. Bridge on the river, Kwai. Uh, your alternate profession? Uh, I like helping others uh, in their fitness journey. Uh, okay. So we need some help. Thank you. Uh, one new word? Uh, live every day to its fullest. Okay. Especially pandemic era. So. Okay. A habit that you're proud of? I tend to take notes in every work meeting. So. Yeah, he took a lot of notes today in the last couple of hours. These are my newfound friends. But Bridge, like, really took a lot of notes. So, yeah, that's true. Uh, one tech in HR you're, you're backing or betting on? I think um, AI and ML will continue to dominate for a few more years. And I okay. think that will set the trend some more. Okay. And if you're an app, what would that be and why? Uh, that would be Spotify because I love music, especially the 70s to the 90s. Yeah, so my favorite would be Spotify too, because the last two years, I possibly have used that much more than ever before. And speaking about last two years, it's been crazy. Uh, a lot of things have changed. And I thought this quote summed it up beautifully. And technology at the forefront of the entire two years and, and, and the coming times. Before I start the panel, I have a small story to tell, and I wanted to share that with you. Yeah. So this is a story from, from my side or my part of the world. So the, there are three pictures. The pictures speak a thousand words. This one is an epic. The picture on the left side, somebody can switch this on, please. So the picture on the left side is our onboarding process before the pandemic. 1,500 people on a single day, a good mix of process and personalization with good feedback. Overnight, we had to move online. Over the last 24 months, we have onboarded tens of thousands of people online, again, with great feedback. Although my belief is that we could do better. And the last picture is about two months old. That is onboarding, we were onboarding 1,000 people in person 
and at the same time onboarding 1,000 people online. A great example of hybrid work. A great example of times to come. So this is one of my favorite stories, and I keep telling this, and I'm really proud of. And, and it's a good segue to my first question. So my first question is which part of the employee life cycle, because my, my favorite is onboarding, because of the cultural assimilation and the impact, of, because of the number of people you're hiring in the last two years. Which part of the employee life cycle do you think it's mo technology will impact most, and why? You know, Nanjapa, I think the life outside the work is, uh, is going to be the most impacted. And HR would need to understand exactly what is going on with people, and, and uh, uh, the Oracle person spoke about it. If there are those 33 million moments of truth in somebody's life and uniqueness in somebody's life, I think we need to understand that. Okay. So it is outside the workplace, uh, throughout the life cycle is what I would say that we would need to, tech is really impacting that. And so more holistic than anything absolutely. else. Absolutely. Bridge. So I think um, the joining experience has, you know, kind of lost a bit of its fun element. Um, so I would like to recall some of, you know, some fun examples from my previous organization. So uh, in one of my previous companies, there used to be a custom where you need to demonstrate a talent in front of a lot of teams, almost the whole company, right? So that kind of, you miss that butterflies in your stomach feeling, right, when you do it virtual. Um, there was another custom which was fire in the belly, which is like, you know, which new joiner can have the maximum number of green chilies, you know, without <laughs> losing their cool. So I think it's very difficult to do all this when you're remote. Um, the other point is, um, you know, I think when you're working remote, when you're connecting on video, there's a lesser chance to build great friendships at, at your workplace, right? Uh, there's a little bit of, you know, lesser amount of bonding, lesser amount of collaboration, uh, and that's what I feel has been lacking. Fire in the belly is a good way to onboard people. <laughs> I mean, a baptism of fire, literally. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm going to now try to open this to the audience, just so that we get a break from here. Um, same question, if you have any questions, comments, thought on what your favorite part of the employee life cycle is and with the technology, which part of it will technology impact the most? Any question, comments, insights to the, to the panel? And by the way, we have a very interesting panel because Ruchira is an HR expert and, and Bridge is uh, a sales guy. So he's from a non-HR background, so he's the HR cynic. So beware. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, so questions? Hi. Uh Good evening, I'm Karan. Thanks, for, first of all, for showing that picture. It brings back a lot of memories for me when I was working oh. in Infosys myself. So are, you still, are you still there or no? <laughs> I was working. Oh, you were? Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, one part, I think, I think talent mobility is going to get impacted a lot uh, with a lot of marketplace being uh, what it is today, right? It's a new technology that we all want to move on to. My, uh, so, would like your comments on that. And another thing which I think it's not happening enough. If we look at the content today, and I look at TikToks and YouTubes of the world, there's a lot of user-generated content that's happening outside the domain of organizations. But when I look at inside, there is not so much user-generated content that is there. Uh, some of it could be the quality piece that, hey, will it be OK enough to share within the large organization, say, Infosys, three and a half lakh people looking at it. But do you think that's going to also begin to explore within organizations as well, where people, A, get tools to create that content. Maybe it's on policies or anything else. Your, com your thoughts on these two pieces. Thanks. Shall I? Go ahead. So I, I completely believe in the concept of uh, WOOL, uh, W-O-O-L, we own our learning. And that's a great point we are saying. It's not just we own our learning, but we also create our own content. And if it is created by a peer, which is relevant, meaningful, fun, uh, I'm sure it will have much more takers than uh, those fuddy-duddy boring contents that, go, th that gets created. So thank you for that idea. I think it's a brilliant one. Actually, it's happening in some form. Um, gig work is an example, but we're also doing a lot of internal gig work. So content creation is one of that, and uh, hugely popular. There are certain restrictions on policy framework which we need to look at, legalities, 
but it's um, by the people for the people is by far the most effective framework that we've ever seen in corporates. But yeah, good question. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead. It's a tendency of generally welcoming the new employee. So uh, don't you think uh, we should give the employee experience uh, while sending off somebody's offboarding us? And it is the great opportunity to you know, tight the loophole uh, to retain the best talent in the organization. But so do you want to take, take that? Uh, I, I didn't get the question properly. So how, how can you treat an exiting employee better and, and creating an offboarding process, having a world-class offboarding process? That's his question, so why not? And so I'm a firm believer of uh, any employee who leaves an organization should leave with absolutely no friction, right? It's like a send off to a great friend, right? So at least in sales, we have always been uh, firm believers of, you know, giving a send off party, you know, celebrating, uh, you know, it's, like, it's not like, okay, this person is leaving our organization, leaving the team behind. It's more about, okay, you're happy for that person's future, right? So apart from all other HR practices like exit interviews and all that, I think the team gets together one last time to kind of celebrate the person's exit and with the promise of staying in touch going forward. So that's my take. If I may add, uh, there has to be a journey of warm welcome to fond farewell. Uh, it's difficult when... I, it, I think both the manager as well as the team member have to make it work. Uh, sometimes it goes off the rail, but it's totally worth it to be actually remain friends with your managers and your team members beyond work and beyond uh, a relationship at the, at the company. Actually, Boomerang employees are all a big part of the talent pool. So, and we invest quite a bit on the alumni pool and we're trying to make it as easy as for them to kind of even return back. In fact, we have a green channel of sorts, so it's easier for them to come back and things like that. So, Boomerang employees are a big part of the talent pool, and what better than people who already know the culture and things like that. So, yeah, it's part of the whole uh, framework. So, We're already 15 uh, minutes in. I have, like, so many questions to ask. Can we, can we so move so and then maybe see, see this later? Thank you. So, I wanted to... No conversation is... Um, complete without data, and I wanted to throw some data in terms of uh, the kind of spends we are seeing this year, about $1.8 trillion, uh, digital acceleration by seven years, um, uh, remote working from four, set up from 465 days has gone to 10 days uh, at the onset of the pandemic. Uh, we're seeing an output increase of 4% per hour, so there's a lot of data that, that goes on. So my question to the panel, and uh, Bridge, maybe we can start with you is do you have, can you share with us your best experience on, on people analytics and data? Um, one of the things that uh, we do at Italite, so by the way, I work for a company called Italite, which is a SaaS-based travel technology management platform. Um, so there's a lot of data crunching that we do. Uh, one of the amazing features that we have is uh, when a corporate employee tries to make their booking, then you know, the, the platform throws up a lot of trend, a uh, lot of data and analytics based on past travel history and trends, which is like, you know, it could show the traveler, okay, these are, the, these are your past preferred flights that you have taken, these are the hotels that you have preferred to check in. So that gives a great um, experience to the traveler while booking, uh, you know, their journey in their travel. Uh, the other set of data that we used, like today, in the post-pandemic world, uh, duty of care is a term that we generally use, which is more about employee safety. That's become of utmost importance. Um, so, um, you know, knowing where your employees are traveling to, which flights are they going to take, which hotels are they going to check into, these have become very valuable for the organization to know. Um, and we at Italite, we make this available to our uh, corporate customers at the click of a button. Uh, so these are some of the areas that we have leveraged data and analytics. Very different from the HR world, but yeah. thank you for that. Very different, but thank you. Richard, you want to take a shot? So uh, one of the things that I'm uh, extremely proud of, the uh, AI being used in hiring, we looked at some 36 parameters over a period of past two years of data, people who had uh, worked with us and had left and had continued to work with us, 36 demographic parameters for those people. 
to create prototypes of the kind of people who have thrived with the organization. And we, of course, had right from uh, true positive to false negative uh, range, but it so worked uh, so well that uh, when we started tweaking our hiring process, looking at the kind of people who really have made a difference in the organization and have thrived and grown and really contributed uh, to the success of the organization, our, our attrition level actually dropped by 25%, and which is a huge deal in uh, life insurance sector. Wow. Uh, so instead of looking at the data when people join and saying what is working, what is not working, we took two steps back and said, let's look at the data and use AI to understand and start hiring the people who, uh, who make a difference to the organization. You must share this with the rest of us because the ROI on some of this is huge. It is huge. It yeah. is huge. So just on a, on a lighter note, what number or data, because we're talking about data, do you keep a tab on the most in your personal life? So again, I'm a salesperson, so I keep tab of the team's sales numbers, that's target versus achievement, week on week, month on month. So but, that's but the only on, number. On your personal side, do you, do you count anything? Uh, probably if I'm gaining weight or losing weight. <laughs> okay. What about you? Okay. I, you can ask all the HR people sitting here, it is retention or attrition data, which is top of our mind, personal or not personal. But on a personal note, the number of uh, birds that I have photographed is what I'm keeping a tab on. Wow. Uh, is, it, is it online? Uh, it's on Insta. Oh, okay. Okay. I mean, the attrition numbers are now, we stopped counting. So, yeah, it's now, the last few years have been very different, so we've stopped looking at those numbers. I have a lot of questions. I'm going to try and move to this one, um, so I'm going to, after, after, after the panelists, I'm going to open this to the audience. So because you're talking so much about technology, I struggle with technology. I don't know so many things, and I try and, try and get educated every day. So what tech skills would HR professionals need in this new world, and how do we enable them? I'm really looking forward to this answer, so over to you folks. I think uh, gamification. Uh, using AI is going to be the game changer. Why? Because the time span, the attention span is really less for uh, the Gen Z and for us also. I mean, I mean, how many times we have read the entire piece or really listening to everything that is being told or in a training room, I'm sure all of you are, almost all of you might be thinking of uh, when to pick up my phone and check my WhatsApp messages, right? So the more we make it interesting, uh, using AI and the more HR understands uh, how to mix both gamification, which is really simplification, I would say, of what you want to convey, okay. and, uh, but use data to do that. Okay. Well, I'm going to take a bit of critical view on this. Uh, so, you know, we, we've been hiring a lot of uh, new employees of late, and uh, when a bunch of them come and ask me, like, okay, this is an HR system, this is a tool, uh, who do I go and check if I need help on that, you know? So I point them to the HR uh, person, the HR BP, and uh, that, that employee gets again rerouted to the IT team, right? So I feel HR, um, you know, colleagues should have uh, more of in-depth knowledge about their own tools and processes that they have deployed, so. Well, thank you. Um, I see this every day. And one of the things we want to do is enable um, our HR folks with a lot of technology education because that's the only way you would understand business better. Um, you put, put the user at the center before drafting policies and technology framework. But I'm going to open this to the audience uh, to answer this question or insights or, or any, any question that you may have. Yes, please. Go ahead. The three elements to understand the HR technology. One is to understand the business, second is the HR, and third is the HR design. Uh, if we would have the two acum, uh, like business acum and the HR understanding, anybody could able to design any HR process in any you know HR technology. Absolutely. Yeah, I would agree to. I would agree to. Any other comments or questions you may have, sir? You had a question. 
So one of the things that I personally look for when I'm hiring for HR is does the person have even a little bit of sales experience? That usually is this little sauce I have for the HR uh, people. S so the question is for Brijesh. Brijesh, do you have sp something specific for sales people that you hire? Uh, that then the resume shows, yeah, this is the secret sauce. Uh, so yeah, I mean, when I l look for, uh, when I interview candidates for sales roles, um, you know, I also look for people who have great communication, uh, great articulation. I think these are de facto stuff that we do look for. But uh, someone who can immediately, you know, build a rapport with the audience or the stakeholder in front, right? So that's it. Because in sales, uh, we firmly believe that people buy from people. So unless they trust you, uh, you have that credibility, you have great relationship building skills, uh, sales doesn't happen, right? Um, so that's, that's what I look for. Thank you. Thanks for the question. So, uh, Rajesh, actually a follow-up on, on what you just said, and uh, I was just thinking, are we stretching the, uh, the entire technology aspect and the usage of technology in HR a bit too much and removing the people element from it? So just wanted to pick your views from any one of you to say, how do you balance how much of tech or, or tech for good that we keep speaking about, how much of technology and how much of people in HR? Because finally, HR is also about the people skills. Are you, are you the oracle? Because you seem to have seen my slides. Because that was my previous slide, by the way. But I can't move it. Ah, yeah, OK. But this is the question. So the paper has leaked. Go ahead. You can, one of you all can answer. So uh, see, uh, post the COVID uh, phase, health, wellness, empathy, connectedness is all come back, right? And, and we are increasingly everybody, and not just HR. The best part I see here is it's not just HR who's talking about it, but it's, it's gone to the board. The board is asking these questions. And hence, HR is really taking a center stage here. So I, I, I have actually a 180 degree uh, point of view in this. I think the, the movement which had gone to technology and where the CFOs and the CTOs were calling the shots, now it has come back to the humanness of it. And let's hold forth uh, to it because, as I said, it's not just HR talking about it, but the organizations, employees, there's a pull factor. I'll give you a very simple example. I call myself a COVID baby in a way that I joined Kotak Life uh, when uh, the lockdown was on. So I had not met my team members who were spread across uh, the geography of India. And what we did, we said, OK, we need to meet. So we had a vocation, guess where? In Goa for seven days. So we just came together, we bonded together, we worked together, and what made it possible, COVID made it possible, but did we let go of the technology? Did we let go of the zoomness into our life? The answer is no, because it makes life more efficient, it makes life much more practical to reach out to people, and it also makes uh, organization much more cost effective. So both are going to coexist in a big way, and, and I think we should all applaud ourselves uh, and, and that, you know, it, it's, it's, I've been told that I should not say that this is a good thing that has come out of COVID, but let's acknowledge that is a good thing that at least people are both are talking about empathy and taking care of people, right? So it's not going to go away. It's not going to go off fa fashion anytime soon, if you ask me. Great answer. Bridge, you want to add? Yeah, uh, so there's no escaping technology these days, right? But um, I believe... <laughs> Nothing can replace a pat on the back for a job well done, or a handshake with a genuine smile, or even a team dinner for some celebration, right? So, um, so what we have started, and when I, when I say we at Italite, we have earmarked specific days in a week where we encourage all teams to be in office just to promote you know, team bonding and collaboration. Uh, what we have uh, also tried to do is we have brought back offsites, uh, very similar to what Richard was saying. Um, so some teams are even doing it twice a year, but you know company-wide offsites at least once a year. Um, speaking from an Italite perspective, we are a technology-first company, uh, but we are very well aware that we can't support our enterprise customers with technology alone, right? If you're stranded at an airport, 
you don't want to interact with a chatbot, right? You want to listen to a human voice at the other end, right? Uh, so our service layer is, is a combination of human assistance with the tech that we deploy. Um, so I hope that answers. I mean, both great answers. I also want to agree with the previous speaker who said he didn't want to receive a birthday, uh, automated birthday email, and I, I so get it. I think if, a, if the manager can just call me and wish me, it would be just fantastic. I try and do that, but I think it will go a long way in just holding on to people. Um, so I'm going to try and move to the last one. We have one minute left uh, before I open it to the audience. Uh, so quickly, top two predictions in that will shape HR technology, and then we'll go on from there. Any one of you? OK, while I'm not an HR expert, uh, like I said earlier, uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning would continue to dominate. Um, and maybe, who knows, right? The future trend could be that organizations might deploy technology that can probably analyze body language. Uh, that will help organizations understand employee behavior much better, right? In turn, trying to help uh, in their emotional and mental well-being. And probably assist in stress management, things like that. Even deploy technology for physical well-being. So anything can happen. And I think you know, globally, these trends are emerging. So that's my take. I would say, uh, which I spoke earlier also, it's a combination of AI and hyper-personalization. It's like uh, if somebody had a very bad meeting uh, the day before, today, uh, the, the branch operations executive says, okay, these are the two new leads for you because they get to know that there was a bad lead, uh, meeting. Two new leads you should rock. Uh, the manager gets to know and he says automatically gets a meeting, uh, a, ch a coffee meeting organizing, hey, chalo, let's have a chat. Uh, HR uh, sends some uh, favorite movies clip to the person to just, uh, to him or her, Next. to uh, buck him up and saying, go ahead and win the world. Uh, and, and there's so much that you can do, right? When you have the right data available at the right time and personify it with the right sen uh, sentiments, right emotions, and r just connectedness. Uh, that would be such a, and I, I you know, uh, three years ago here on this stage, we were talking about what if there is a technology which calls people and uh, these thousands of candidates and figures out who's the best candidate. And today we have solutions for that. So I, I am hoping that somebody out here is listening and going to have a solution for this also. So hyper-personalization backed by AI. Yeah, I, I, mean, I'm, I mean, that's very well put because that's what I've seen. It's already happening in the markets, whether it's Amazon, Netflix, or even Tesla. Tesla are, are, Tesla's possibly doing the craziest things. Uh, even cars are self-healing and they're going to eventually go to service centers on their own. I mean, that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. So hopefully, we'll have that for the employees as well. Uh, I just want to add something here because we started the employee experience. In, in our view, experience is going to be in three forms, uh, physical, digital, and emotional. The physical is really the, the office. And today, office means office, home, or anywhere else. Uh, the digital part is all the technology that we are talking about. And emotion is all about culture and values and connectedness that, like the panelists spoke. So it's going to be an amalgamation of all these three things. And at various points in time, one will become more important than the other. And that's how I think this will kind of uh, pan out. Uh, before I go, uh, one last question. An advice you'd want to give to your future self? Because we're talking about the future. That's an easy one. Uh, spend more time with family and friends and take care of your health because that's your number one asset. And you? Stay connected with old friends and make new ones. Super. No, no better advice than that. Uh, one last question just yeah. before we <clears throat> close. Yeah, okay. so Nanjapa, this question is for you and in fact for all three of you. I'm the person who's asking the question. Uh, <laughs> okay, I, good, I, I need that for my own learning. So. Sure. Uh, Attrition, resignation, some of these things are being spoken about a lot in the last 12 months or four quarters. Uh, I am a talent acquisition leader, and um, I think attrition puts additional pressure on people like us, right? And when I look at attrition, I look at attrition as internal bleeding for which you don't have a bandage, right? 
So what does data suggest according to you in terms of uh, solutions which are based on technology and data related amalgamation and in case there is any insight or uh, past experience that you may want to share, please do that with us. Thank you. Sure, thank you. It's a great question. So I'm going to put them on, a, on the spot. So, Bridge, Prachira. Uh, you know, I'm going to say, uh, I, I, this is one thing that I won't want to answer with data. I think let's acknowledge that the talent acquisition people are dead tired at this point in time. <laughs> I, and let's acknowledge that. Let's give them a break. Uh, let's tell them that, hey, guy, hey, buddy, you want to take the day off? Take the day off today. Come back rejuvenated the next day. Let's keep the data aside for some time for this problem from the time so that we really solve for it. Otherwise, we are just running. Uh, um, chasing a tail, actually. <laughs> I'm chasing a tail. That's, that's the term. Yes, that's the phrase, yes. But I, my recruitment friends are asking me, which is that day we're going to take off? There's no eighth day in the week. <laughs> because there's the weekend where they have to do these things. Monday and Tuesday, they have to release the offers. And then there are three days to ask for exceptions. And then again, then there are interviews after that. So there is no, th we need an eighth day. By the way, I started my uh, uh, career as a recruiter. So my heart lies there. So I know how that works. Me too. <laughs> me too. And heart lies there. Absolutely. I mean, great question. So um, anyone else before? I'm just being magnanimous here to when we talk about like how will be the future of hr i think it also depends on uh, when we do the ratings of the candidates of the employees there are many situations when people for bell curve they use it for the ratings so what i want to understand is that what do you think is it what we go for still we should go for using it as a rating mechanism or is it that uh, we should maybe if all of them are good all of them are rated as five we should move on and let them be five because what happens is that because of bell curve you sometimes rate down the resources and then they look for opportunities outside the organization they start looking for because they feel that some way maybe my uh, talent or whatever my contribution I have given to the organization that has not been, I have not got deserved, I have not got what I was deserved. So what do you think? I just wanted to have a, uh, like maybe your thoughts on that. It's actually a philosophical question, so it's a very hard answer, but I will still... It's a chicken egg <laughs> question. Which came first? <laughs> so would you want to take a All shot? All right, since... Uh, so like everything else, this has, uh, it, it's like there's two sides to the same coin, right? And this one has been, since the time I've been in HR, I've been listening to this. Uh, we know that ICICI Bank did away with, and anybody from ICICI Bank here maybe uh, is able to answer this better. They did away uh, uh, the bell curve. And, uh, but have they done it away from uh, all, the, all the grades and every levels? The answer is no. So it's a mix and match thing. Do I have an answer? The, no, the answer is uh, I don't have an answer. Uh, it's uh, whatever makes sense to the organization at that phase um, of that organization's life, uh, and whatever makes relevance to the, per to the organization to grow from point A to point B. Uh, taking the bell curve helps. Discarding the bell curve helps, so be it. Actually, There's no one size fits all at this point in time. We've actually gone back and forth on it. So we yeah. ourselves have gone back and forth. We've done without it, with it. There are pros and cons to each one. We're still searching for answers. I don't know if there's an ideal performance management system in the world yet. So we're going to live and learn it. But uh, along the way, we'll make some exceptions and see what best fits people or segments, really. That's really how we're looking at it right now. And every two, three years, things change. Demand supply changes overnight, so then Again, some of those policies change. So we are looking at it every two, three years and then figuring it out. So I want to end this conversation. It was a great conversation. Thank you so much for wonderful insights. Thank you. Um, technology uh, revolution is going to only become faster. Our belief is that organizations and employees who are going to learn faster and govern smarter are going to thrive. And what better to end the conversation with a quote from Steve Jobs. He's my favorite. 
um, there are the process of experience should start uh, from the experience and going back to technology, and we are already seeing that in the external world. It's now time to look at the same model in the employee experience space as well. Thank you so much for your time. It was wonderful being here.